Hey everyone, my name's Karel, and today we're going to take a look at the Iron Claw Trap. This cheap 30 capacity trap fires a grappling hook that snags the raider, then reels them back in towards the trap. While this trap can't kill a raider by itself, it's incredibly effective at slowing or pinning raiders down, especially slow, cautious raiders. The Iron Claw has a cap of 4 blocks of range, and due to this it's rarely going to catch a speedrunning raider, unless some other sort of mechanism is used to slow the raider down first. This is especially true if the Iron Claw is positioned to either side of the raider rather than the front or back, uh, just because it's going to have to travel further in order to catch a speedrunning raider than it would otherwise. Now mechanically, Iron Claws function in about five phases. There's kind of a priming phase, which is a short delay when the Iron Claw has seen a raider and is preparing to fire the claw. You can see here it's going to uh, glow orange a little bit before it fires that claw out at me. And there's the firing phase, which is where the claw is actually on its way towards me. Then there's the grappling phase, where it's made contact with the raider. Uh, this will briefly immobilize the raider. Then it starts pulling you back in or retracting the claw if it's missed, which is what we call the retracting phase. And then there's a rearming phase, where the iron claw is resetting and getting ready to fire again. Once, Only once all five of these phases have been completed will the iron claw be ready to fire a second time, However, this is one of the few traps in the game that can actually fire repeatedly until either the trap or the claw itself is destroyed. So you can see here, that yellow glow around there means we are in the rearming phase and the iron claw will not be ready to fire again until that is finished. Now if I actually let this grab me, I'm going to just stand here. You can see I'm trying to move around and eventually, once that claw grabs me, it will actually freeze me in place. It's going to hold me up against the trap for a few seconds, and then it will release me pretty much like the raider's grappling hook would. Now, as you might have noticed, that claw is homing. Iron claws are actually the only trap in the game, at launch at least, with innate homing properties. This makes them incredibly valuable in environments where corrosive cubes and hollow cubes are present, as the claws will actually hunt down raiders through both of those block types, at least once the raider steps into the area uh, in which this can target. Uh, the trap does have to see the raider before the claw will fire, but once fired, it will very happily track the raider through either corrosive or hollow cubes. Now, as I mentioned, these claws will rearm themselves, so unless either the claw or the trap itself is broken, this thing will continue to fire. It's one of the very few traps in the game that will do that sort of continuous firing, uh, which makes it also very useful in some very specific circumstances. Now, Iron Claw Traps are one of the only traps in the game, or in fact, they are the only trap in the game currently, where the trap itself can be disabled by destroying a disconnected part of the trap. Normally, in order to disable a trap, you have to shoot some part of the trap, right? Uh, this Plasma Bow obviously doesn't do it, but this uh, Volt Lancer certainly will. Now, you can actually disable this trap without completely destroying it by shooting the claw or uh, cutting it with any sort of a sword or a grenade or a projectile or an impaler trap or a piston or really any sort of damage that impacts either the chain or the claw will break that claw and disable the trap. So if I go over here and uh, get this trap to fire at me, I can shoot that with the plasma crossbow and that trap will be immediately disabled. Uh, it is not destroyed, it does not give you experience for doing so, but it is currently disabled. Uh, for the most part, raiders will probably still want to shoot the trap just to get the experience from it and the possible resource drop. Now also of note here is that only one Iron Claw can grapple the player at a time. If two Iron Claws attempt to grapple you at the same time, one of them will win and it's the first one that reaches you. So over here on the left, I've got a uh, modded Iron Claw with some faster uh, movement speed mods on it. And over on the right, I've got an unmodded Claw. And I'm going to trigger both of these at the same time when I cross this borderline here. So uh, both of these will fire at me. The left one will obviously reach me first. The right one will attempt to grab me, but it will lose because the left one already has a grab on me. Uh, you will see this pretty clearly here. I get pulled to the left trap. Now, Iron Claw mods are pretty straightforward. Aside from the usual second wave mod, all of these mods boil down to doing exactly what the Iron Claw already does anyway, but just a little bit better. Looking at these left to right, over here we've got the Double Down mod. This gives the Iron Claw a second chain to fire. And by that what I mean is if the first claw or the chain is destroyed, but the trap itself remains intact, 
Instead of just going immediately into a deactivated state, the Iron Claw Trap will ready another Grappling Claw to be fired. It takes about a second to a second and a half before that's ready to go, but then it will attempt to fire at the Raider the next time they pass through again. Now, the Grease Chains mod significantly increases the rate at which the Raider is pulled in during the retracting phase specifically. I'm not sure of the exact numbers, the timing is pretty difficult to calculate, and uh, it's going to also depend on the uh, distance at which the Raider gets grabbed. Obviously, if the Raider is further away, Grease Chains is more valuable than if the Raider is close to the Iron Claw Trap. But the time that an unmodded Iron Claw grabs the Raider is at about four tiles of range, and the time between that and the grab rotor touching the trap seems to be about a second and a half uh, unmodded, while with the grease chains, that time shortens to around three quarters of a second, which indicates an approximate pull speed increase of 100%. So it's about twice as fast during that specific phase of the firing cycle. Now, a quick launch over here is a little bit different. Quick launch improves the firing phase, which is that first phase after the claw is fired and before it grabs the raider. Uh, that will reduce the time between when the chain launches and when it latches on just by increasing the projectile speed of the claw itself. Now, in my experience, this is often less useful than the greased chains because it doesn't modify the arming time before the launch in any way. So it's not actually softening that or reducing that time uh, by all that much. It also doesn't seem to reduce the time uh, of the entire firing cycle by as much as greased chains does. Uh, it, according to my very unscientific testing, an unmodded Iron Claw takes about uh, 1.75 or 1 3 quarter seconds between detecting the Raider and the Claw making contact at that standard four blocks of range, while Quick Launch only brings it down to somewhere between uh, 1 and a quarter and 1 and a half seconds. It's really hard to time that. Uh, additionally, Quick Launch will be less impactful the closer the Raider is to the trap when contact is made. Obviously, since the train has to travel uh, less distance, or the claw has to travel less distance to actually make contact with the raider, uh, it, the impact of increasing the speed doesn't do as much at short range. However, it is important to note that when dealing with a very fast raider or a skilled, cautious raider who's focused on something else, quick launch very well might be the difference between grabbing the raider or missing them entirely, so don't discount this mod. The last mod we'll take a look at is, of course, the standard second wave mod. This goes through the usual four-second arming cycle after the raider picks up the gen mat. It's invisible and unbreakable until the raider picks up the gen mat, but then it goes through that four-second arming cycle, after which it'll be ready to go through its normal firing cycle the next time the raider steps into its line of sight. So let's talk about the modding a bit. I like Grease Chains over Quick Launch, and the reason for that is it reduces the total firing cycle time by significantly more than Quick Launch does. However, Quick Launch isn't really that bad. Uh, usually when modding these things out, I will apply Grease Chains first, but generally if I'm going to mod an Iron Claw Trap, I'm going to apply both of those mods. Uh, that is a pretty significant overall time decrease. Uh, if you can use both, it takes the time to grab and pull a Raider from that four tile maximum range from three seconds down to approximately two and a quarter seconds or so. Uh, that shaves off about three quarters of a second. That doesn't sound like much, but that's a pretty significant timing bump. And as a side benefit, Quick Launch also makes the trap significantly harder to avoid by just running past it. So generally speaking, I like to use both of these whenever it's possible, even if it means leaving out some other trap in a setup. The benefits of grabbing the Raider faster and getting that really nice immobilize off at their current location while the Claw grapples them, and then pulling them back towards the Iron Claw trap at light speed, uh, that outweighs almost anything else you're going to be able to do with a mere 20 capacity that it takes to apply both of those mods to this trap. Alright, so next let's talk tactics a bit. Iron Claws can accomplish a bunch of things for you. They can pull Raiders out of position, they can help dictate engagement range, they can pull raiders into or through various trap firing lines, and they can add a lot of pressure to already, already stressful areas. They're one of the key components of what a lot of raiders call kill boxes, which is basically just a single room in which you throw everything. You throw everything in the kitchen sink at the raider all at once. Iron claws are typically a key part of that simply because they can apply so much pressure to the raider. They're scary. 
No one wants to deal with them in, ad in addition to all of the other stuff that gets thrown at them, because the Iron Claws are pretty hard to avoid. And it doesn't matter if the trap itself gets you, or kills you, uh, if it grabs you, something else almost certainly will. So even if the raider breaks that chain immediately once the uh, claw contacts them, it's still got that crucial like half to three quarters second immobilize on the raider, and they have to deal with that iron claw chain in order to start dealing with the other stuff that's around them trying to murder them. So it, it's a really powerful trap, and it's uh, really strong, especially when you have the raider already under threat from other traps. Kill boxes aren't Obviously, of course, they aren't the only use case for this thing. Uh, in fact, I would say they're probably not even the best use case for it. But uh, generally, areas that you are applying a lot of pressure to the raider, an iron claw is a great way to heighten that pressure and make them think even harder about their approach before they just go charging into a scenario. However, iron claws are slow and short ranged. Those are both huge downsides. I've seen a lot of maps where builders use an Iron Claw to pull raiders into a single impaler trap. This is an extremely ineffective way to use the Iron Claw because what it's accomplishing can be done exactly the same way, to exactly the same effect, using a Bolt Shot Trap. But the Bolt Shot Trap has better range, faster time to kill, fewer ways to go wrong, and less chance of accidentally saving the raider from another trap. It, if you don't position Iron Claws perfectly, there are actually an excellent way of saving a raider and giving them a get out of jail free card where they don't have to worry about their movement for a second or so while they're being pulled to a location that they might have already made safe for themselves by destroying some other trap. So uh, Iron Claws have a lot of caveats going into their uh, construction and you need to make sure that you're not creating a safe zone for the raider near the Iron Claw uh, that they can just you know, let the Iron Claw have them. If they just let the Claw pull them away uh, from all of your other traps, sometimes that is a better plan than trying to fight the Claw off along with all of the other murder coming your way. So, uh, yeah. As a builder, you have to be very careful where you position these things. And don't use them to pull the Raider into something like a single Impaler trap. Uh, not only is a Bolt Shot trap going to do that job better, faster, and probably more accurately, it's also going to not have the chance of saving the raider from some other trap combination. So you want to use Iron Claw traps hopefully simultaneously with another trap. Like if you have a Bolt Shot trap and an Iron Claw trap targeted at the same block, the raider has to respond to both of those. If they're coming from different angles, the raider can only effectively deflect in one direction with a sword, and they have to deflect the bolt shot trap, right? Uh, otherwise, it's going to kill them. Uh, obviously, a raider with an arc barrier is going to break the iron claw, and that's that. Yeah, that nothing's going to happen there. Uh, but it will. Well, he'll also deflect the bolt shot bolts with that same uh, arc barrier. But any other mechanism of defense, uh, like the uh, swords or trying to shoot down the iron or the iron claw's actual grappling claw. All of those mechanisms require that the raider respond towards either the Iron Claw or the Bolt Shot Trap. And if they respond to the wrong one of those, or if they respond to only one of those, then you have them in a great spot. You've got them right where you want them, because either the Iron Claw makes contact and pulls them into a hopefully greater area of danger, or the Bolt Shot Trap just straight up kills them. So, uh, generally speaking, the Iron Claws are best used with something else that's also targeting the Raider simultaneously. Now, one last thing I'd like to point out about the Iron Claw Trap is that its effective range is actually one block longer than its targeting range. So while it will only target, you know, these four blocks out here, and if I stand here, it won't target me, this block is actually under threat from the Iron Claw as long as you can get the Raider to trigger the trap. Uh, that is done so that the Iron Claw actually has about four full blocks of range in any of its directions. It has about a 60 degree total cone of fire, uh, about 30 degree angle off in each direction out there. So um, if I was to trigger this and I don't step back beyond this block, in fact, even if I do step back just a teeny tiny bit beyond the block, it still can make contact with me and grab me. If I, however, get to about here, I uh, didn't get quite far enough there. Let's try that again. I 
grab this thing and let it target me out to here. Yeah, here I am safe. So right about the, uh, you know, one quarter of the way into this block, it will stop being able to grab me for my own testing. And I am perfectly safe there. Yeah, right about here. Yeah, so that is a way of avoiding those traps. But you have to get further away than you think in order to actually escape the claw because the targeting range is much shorter than the actual full grab range. Anyway, that's all I've got for today. Next time we're going to look at a much more aggressive trap, the bomb trap. Hope you all have a great day, and I'll see you then.